Hello and welcome to another episode of Make It Monday. This is Nicole Hetty here and today I have an exciting technique to show you that I call Polaroid two-step style masking. The first thing I'm going to do is show you how to make the actual Polaroid style mask that I used on my project. And what I have here is a piece of cardstock, a strip that I cut, cut three quarters of an inch wide. And then I have just a piece of regular typing paper that measures three by four inches. And I'm just going to lay this strip down along the edge and mark it with a pen. And just go all the way around on all four sides. I find this a little bit easier to do than uh, and faster than getting out a ruler and measuring all the three quarter inch increments. So there is the finished product with that. I'm going to get out my cutting mat, a ruler, and a craft knife. And what I'm going to do is trim just inside the frame that we created in the middle. And you don't necessarily need a ruler to do this, just a straight edge will work. And you want to try to keep your corners fairly neat so that your masking will turn out um, more uniform. Okay, so there we have the two pieces to our mask ready. We're going to go ahead and do the first portion of the masking, which is creating the white frame. Um, what I did is I have a piece of craft cardstock that is cut to the same dimensions this mask was, which is three by four inches. And I'm going to go ahead and just adhere. I've got temporary adhesive on the back of these pieces here. I put the frame down and then I'm going to put the center down like this. And that will help to get that center piece perfectly centered since I use the masking frame as a guide. Now that this is in place, I'm going to use a dauber and fresh snow ink. And I'm gonna go around the outside edge of this first mask. Now with this technique, I found that it's best to apply really heavy inking around the initial edge of this mask so that you get that bold definition of the frame once you remove the mask. So I'm applying the ink pretty heavily here. Once you have the initial heavy layer in place, I just kind of like to take and Use a slight brushing motion around the edge. And you know, if you feel like you need more ink on the dauber to do this, feel free. I found that you can't really do too much with this technique. Just kind of blend. And to try not to make it look too uniform around the edges, that's why I'm pulling it out like this. You want it to look artsy and, um, you know, interesting. Okay, that should do it. So then you get to see the magic and remove the center rectangle. And 
and there you have your mask frame that we will be stamping in next. So now that we did um, that initial sponging, we're going to use the second part of the mask. And like I said, to make it easy on yourself, just make this mask the same size as your focal point. I've got two flowers um, from the new set called Daydreamer. And I have them on the same block together. And I'm inking them up with... Raspberry Fizz ink. Okay, now that I have this inked, I'm going to go ahead and stamp my flowers. And I'm going to go ahead and put two here. And you want to make sure you, that you apply pretty good pressure so that this stamp is uh, making an impression all the way to the edge of your mask. That's why you want to use typing paper and not cardstock to make your mask because um, if it's thicker than that, you'll have a hard time getting the impression all the way to the edge. Like so. And I feel as though it needs just one more little touch of pink. And I'm going to Apply that right here. Is I'm going to add some stem details uh, using Simply Chartreuse ink and the stems from Daydreamer. I'm um, using the smaller stem first. And I'm going to put on there. right there and I'm just gonna go ahead and switch out the stems here and use the one that turns in the other direction and add that right there so I'm gonna remove the mask now and you can see how gorgeous that is I love the way that white frame makes the images pop. Um, I'm going to use a leaf from Daydreamer again with the Simply Chartreuse ink still. And I'm going to add a few leaves around the corners here. And this just helps to break up the squareness of the project of the focal point and it just helps to soften the edges a bit just want to kind of have the leaves feather around the edge like that so the next thing we're going to do is add the sentiment, and this is the sentiment from Blooming Button Bits, and I'm just going to add it using True Black Ink. I'm going to go ahead and trim the left hand edge with pinking shears, just take a little bit off. I'm going to go in and I'm going to add with a black pen. I'm going to fill in the little black, the little openings, dotted openings at the base of these flowers. It just kind of helps to carry the black color throughout the project a little bit better. It's just a little detail, but it can make a big difference. Now I've gone ahead and filled um, the background block with um, the background basics tin types, and I'm going to add this small um, medallion image from Mende Medallion, 
and um, a little trick I have for you. This is going to be fairly detail oriented and a little trick I do is if I know I'm going to place a big focal point on top of a background I'm stamping, I um, go ahead and put the focal point down and kind of mark where um, things are going to be covered up. So by looking at this I know I'm going to want to do the top row and I only need to do these three rows over. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and use this small medallion to fill in. It's really fun if you ever get a chance to sit down one day and just experiment with the different background stamps you have. Um, a lot of our stamps have large openings like this one in background basics, tin types, and um, it it's kind of fun to see what kind of other images you have that can fill in the centers so that you can mix and match like I am today. I'm just going to add a little tiny piece of the medallion down the edge here. And there is the finished background. And notice how much time I saved by not having to stamp in that area. Okay, now I'm getting ready to finish up. I'm going to go ahead and adhere the background to a true black card base. Like that. And then I've got a piece of ribbon here, um, true black grow grain. And I'm going to notch the ends. And many of you already do this, but I know it was quite a light bulb moment for me when I learned um, how to do this. If you have a wider ribbon especially, if you go ahead and you fold it in half lengthwise and trim in a V from the center, down on the center, up towards the edges. Like that. You'll end up with a perfect V every time. I'm going to do both ends of this like that and I'm going to adhere this in place and part of the black ribbon is going to overhang the edge just a tiny bit so I didn't put adhesive all the way down just part of the way okay. adhere that right there and then I've got my focal point and I'm just going to put some foam squares on the back. Is it paper backings? And I'm going to line point up with the edge. And as a last step, I'm going to apply some large black rhinestones, kind of so they appears to be anchoring the focal point down onto the card. Putting them on either side here, right in the center of where the ribbon protrudes from the edges. And there is the completed card.